This and every episode of Wrecked Podcast is brought to you by Beeksy Exchange, an upcoming cryptocurrency exchange built in collaboration with One Market Data. Beeksy is bringing legacy finance speed, power, and sophistication to crypto for the first time. With 225,000 transactions per second per pair, comparable to NASDAQ, 15 order types on day one, with 25 order types on full rollout, and a dedicated customer support team, Beeksy is setting itself apart from the competition. Check out Beeksy today at Beeksy.com and pre-register today at Beeksy.com slash registration to get your free Beeksy exchange tokens. That's Beeksy.com. B-E-A-X-Y dot com. You got anything good for the intro? Mm, I can figure... Uh, not really. <laughs> uh, uh, that. Just, uh, that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Wrecked Podcast. I am Bunchu alongside my esteemed colleague and co-host, Crypto Chamber. Chamber, how are you doing, buddy? Uh, a little cold, uh, but uh, all in all, pretty good. Just got back from uh, Las Vegas over the weekend. It was, it was a good time. So L- quite little bit time the change though. in temperature. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't, you know... I'm going to talk in Celsius so the rest of the world can understand me. Oh, cool. um, you know, it wasn't like 30 degrees out. Uh, I guess that'd be like 100. I'm not sure. Ballparking it. Like, what's I have a hot- no clue. You could be telling me fucking anything right now. And what's like 100, like 100 Fahrenheit would be pretty hot, right? Yes. A little hot day? Yes. Okay. So it's not like 100 Fahrenheit outside, but it was like a nice spring day in Vegas. You know what I mean? Like where you can go to the patio right. and, and, then and drink today, outside. You got eight inches of snow. I got home. It was like minus 21 degrees Celsius. I'm not, again, not sure what the conversion is there, but for everybody not in the U.S. will understand exactly what I'm talking about. It was ice cold. Well, even... Like, well, what, yeah, what would have been in your neck of the woods? Well, today I woke up and it was minus 14 Fahrenheit, so that's fucking cold. That sounds fucking cold. <laughs> the only and thing I do know for sure is that... I got eight inches of snow today, for sh- so that was fine. Yeah, so I, th- I, think, I think the temperature would have been very, very close to that. How was, was Vegas... Vegas was good. Vegas was good. I uh, got there on Friday. Um, I was at the Wynn. I never stayed there before. Nice. Wynn's awesome. I love w- the Wynn. Wynn was very nice. I uh, spent a lot of time. I was doing a, a conference at uh, uh, Treasure Island. Oh, cool. Not as nice, but well, still fun. Yeah. Like a fun, fun little atmosphere there. But uh, I did some, some significant drinking at... Uh, the Cosmo at the, you know, you ever been in like the Chandelier Club or whatever it is, the Chandelier Bar? Fancy. The, the three tier, like you're like yep. drinking within a shit. Very, very nice. Did you, um, uh, were you able to meet up with anybody from the Bitcoin conference that was going on out there? So funny you say that. Uh, we had somebody, we had, I want to say Digital Lawrence was there. I think Peter was there for that. Mm-hmm. I think I saw them tweet about it. I know Donnie, I think, lives there, right? Uh, I think he's back in uh, New York, actually. Oh, is he? Oh. Yeah. Shout out. Yeah, shout out to Donnie. Yeah. Um, but no, I didn't have a chance. Uh, I think Peter was leaving before I really had a yeah, chance Yeah, I think to... they might have got there kind of the day or two before you. Yeah. And that was the end of their trip. <laughs> but um, uh, it's funny. Uh, if, speaking of crypto, I was at a bar late night. I forget what where I was. I think it was like the Venetian or something. And, you know, I'm... I'm I did, you know, uh, start smoking cigarettes while I was there too, which was great. Um, big fan of smoking cigarettes and drinking. Cool, uh, <laughs> yeah, very cool. You can, it. I'm only as uh, I think, you know, uh, alcoholics can relate to this. You're only as sober as your surroundings. So if nobody's drinking around you, it's easier to quit. Right. You know, in the in the world we live in today, it's very easy to quit smoking because really nobody does. Right. You go to Vegas and it smells like 1985. I mean, it's funny it's, you say that because I just started watching Mad Men and I've never watched Mad Men before. Solid and show. Uh, 
literally they're just smoking the oh, entire time and so i good. almost feel like i can taste it and i'm like this so is good. disgusting <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> I, it, I, I was saying to somebody i'm like going to vegas is like going into a time machine because it smells like the 80s yeah, like it, it, no. and it, in a good hard way pass. <laughs> hard pass for me uh, but i did go to this really um uh planet 13 which is advertised as the biggest uh dispensary in the world oh cool very cool. Went there. I was there for three days. I went there two days. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Uh, Sweet. But ran into a problem. Uh-oh. The day I was leaving, made a little bit of money while I was there. Nice. Um, so, you know, had some good mojo going for me. I had uh, a basically one and a half pre-rolls left. A pre-roll is usually about a gram. Okay. Uh, so I had a gram and a half of pot left. And I'm like, well, I'm like, do I put it in my suitcase you know, risk it. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. I'm like, you know, I've I've been a little bit lucky, made a little bit of money. I'm like, I'm gonna go and fuck it up somehow by, you know what I mean? <laughs> Getting arrested. Yes, exactly. So I'm like, I'll just smoke everything oh, before Jesus. I go before I go on, go to the airport. Oh, so I I smoked. Um, I forget what it's called. It was apple something. And I'm a big smoker, as you know. This is uh, the the bud tender at Planet 13 had recommended this. Um, this it was this apple blend or something, and you could taste the apple in it. It was delicious, and it had about like a forty percent THC level. Um, and then I followed that up with half of a Bruce Banner, I, and I, I just turned. Like I speaking th- another language to me. <laughs> I'm telling you, these these are mind crushing strains. And, uh, yeah, I was mangled uh, by the time I got to the airport. Uh, well, sounds like you had a one ter- wonderful time. It was time. a great time. I, you know what? Las Vegas really agrees with me. You have said multiple times on this show that you don't like Vegas. I know. So I have changed I, my better, opinion. I, I have, it sounds like it. I have. Ch- it's because of the legal weed, I'm going to be honest. Uh, <laughs> uh, it definitely helped. Well, that sounds about right. So. Yeah, I definitely, definitely enjoyed it a bit more this time. Anyway, we have uh, some awesome stuff coming up for you on this show. We are going to announce the giveaways to both of our contests that we had going on. But first up, I want to tell you about Honey Miner. So our friends at Honey Miner are back. They were our very first sponsors on the show, and they have a huge announcement. They are now supporting Linux. Have you ever wanted to get into crypto mining but have no idea how? Well, Honey Miner is the easiest way to get started. They have a one-click install mining software that's going to earn you Bitcoin straight to your computer. They now support Windows and Linux. Their Linux miner is the most profitable Linux miner in the world. It is compatible with Ubuntu 16.04, Ubuntu 18.04, or CentOS 7. And Honey Miner Max, their Linux miner, is out producing the market by 10%. So you're going to get paid out 10% plus the market on your earnings there. So they're going to pay you out every two hours as well, uh, but you're going to average out to be greater than 10% on the open market earnings. So if you're interested, go over to honeyminer.com slash labs to check that out and uh, follow them on Twitter at get honey miner. So uh, check those guys out. They're awesome. Shout out Yeezy. Yeah, you know what I like about Honey Miner? It's like a guy like me who really has no idea what they're doing can you know make a couple clicks and be mining. Yeah, you but could it sounds be like it sounds like real miners Bruce... can actually use it too. Yes, you could. Uh, you specifically could be face first in a Bruce Banner and yeah. <laughs> still and still mine, <laughs> or you know someone like Walken can be right using exactly. My, I, Honey I think, I think that's pretty impressive. It, it's, I would imagine a, it would usually go either one way or the other. It surely but, is. Yeah, it, but I like that. It, that's, that's good stuff. Good on you, Um, easy. Yeah, good on you. So let's get into some fun stuff right here. We are going to announce right off the bat. We won't make you wait to the end. We're too good to the fans. We are, you know. Look, <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to listen to me for 40 no, minutes, so no. they probably don't either. So we are going to give away our contest winners right now. So first up. Well, last week we had some really awesome guests on the show with, that are, have awesome projects coming out. 
and they were kind enough to help us out and help you guys out with some hook us up with some giveaway stuff so we had beeksy exchange one of our other sponsors uh, a great partner with us on the show they are launching their exchange this week i believe tomorrow january 30th so if uh if you haven't signed up into their discord yet uh it was a requirement to be you know considered for this giveaway so if you win the giveaway you're already in there but if you haven't uh they're actually taking whitelist um usernames in their discord now and i think you're going to be able to get onto the platform tomorrow if you are in their discord so i actually whitelisted my username and um email today so i'm going to be on it tomorrow which will be pretty cool yeah so get over there to their discord uh we'll link it again in this show notes but they were kind enough to give away a diamond status membership to their exchange so uh this is going to get you pretty much every single perk that you can imagine on their exchange uh reduced trading fees uh uh, expediated customer support, all that awesome stuff, and we are giving it away to one winner. And there is actually only, I think, one other person currently that has such a status, and yeah. that is Crypto Cred. So um, we are giving it away here, and we have a winner here, Chamber. And you know what? The cool part is when we drew this winner. Um, I, we went and searched them on Twitter to make sure they had done everything they were supposed to do. And I saw this username, and I actually remembered here that uh, this person went out of their way to tell us that they were having a hard time leaving an iTunes review, which was also part of the um you know the qualifications and they actually were able to do it but they did reach out and tell us they were having a, a hard time. But the winner here is Yasin underscore dira so that's yasin underscore dira their uh, handle or their display <laughs> name here on twitter it makes me laugh it's yasin and 212 others so when they like one of your <laughs> tweet it says if you feel like 213 people have liked your tweet but so congratulations yasin underscore dira we will uh be tagging you in a post tomorrow to let you know that you've won and then secondly we had hero games on the show last week we had danny and dan from hero games uh if you haven't heard of hero yet you've probably been living under a rock it is an awesome uh platform that's gamifying trading getting chamber to live five uh, five minutes at a time. So what we did on that show was we actually played Hero the whole time during the show, and for every for every time we won, we were giving away 100 Hero and access to their beta platform. Uh, that you there's a 25,000 person waiting list to get on. So uh, the winner here is going to receive 800 Hero and access to the beta platform, and the winner here is at foolish dweller so at foolish dweller on twitter uh congratulations you have won the hero giveaway um this person i'm I'm glad this person won actually when we picked it i was searching the username and i realized this person interacts with us all the time on twitter so fan of the show and fan of us which is pretty cool always love when that happens so congratulations uh ryan who is at foolish dweller so uh we got some giveaway winners chamber i love it i like like you said i like when it's people that we kind of know um you know what i mean like that we've seen yes. on Twitter. However, they are in no way fixed. We actually use this. Uh, no, if it was fixed, I'd be doing it to my alt account. <laughs> right, exactly. At alt chamber. We yeah. actually, so if anybody wants to go and verify this, I actually have the screenshots uh, saved on both of these. Um, but the site we use, I don't even know how to uh, pronounce it. It's T-W-R-E-N dot C-H. And it's a pretty cool site if you're ever doing a Twitter giveaway out there. Uh, it you just copy and paste the link to your tweet, and then you can give it the uh, parameters in here to make sure that everybody who retweeted it, it has actually done the things you asked to qualify. So um, I actually have the screenshots here, which we can post for verification. Um, but 
those are your winners. So congratulations at Foolish Dweller and at Yasin Dira. Um, we will be getting those winnings and stuff out to you ASAP. Yay! Cool. <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> but other than that, let's get to the news. <laughs> Chamber, start us off with some news, fella. All right, hot off the press from CCN. Uh, mm-hmm. California nurse charged with selling hundreds of Bitcoin worth of opiates. Sweet. Uh, I know, totally, totally rad, dude. Uh, a Rancho Cordova, California nurse, has been charged by federal authorities with selling illegal narcotics via the dark net markets. Uh, allegedly, her username... Pharmacy 41, uh, obviously pharmacy is spelt with an F here, uh, <laughs> earned over 200 BTC across three markets. Uh, Carrie Elaine 200 Mark- Bitcoin? Yeah, uh-huh. that's, not, that- that's not nothing. Sounds lucrative. That is not nothing. Um, Carrie Elaine Marquis made an appearance in federal court in Sacramento, charged, numer- uh, charged with numer- numerous counts of drug dealing. Uh, Marquis reportedly used the handle Pharmacy 41 across several darknet markets beginning in 2013. She told customers that her source uh, was people who bought pills from those who had them uh, illegally prescribed. Uh, So in total, she allegedly sold almost 9,000 hydrocodone, um, over 2,500 oxycodone, and nearly 1,000 methadone pills. She actually actually sold uh, 70 morphine tablets, too, and 70 fentanyl patches. Dang. Fuck. That's some serious stuff right there. <laughs> 200 Bitcoin. You know, it's funny. We, we before the show, you know, go and grab a couple news stories here and there that we think are interesting. And then we post them in our Telegram and we always kind of, I wouldn't say fight over who gets what, but there's typically a natural order. This was such a chamber story. (laughs) (laughs) It's not even funny. (laughs) You always leave me with like the technical. Yeah, you get the technical financial stuff, and I get get the the nurse selling hundreds of Bitcoin worth of drugs. (laughs) Yeah, that's my wheelhouse. (laughs) So, uh, which is funny because you know everybody says Bitcoin is only used by drug dealers, and in this case, drug dealing nurses. (laughs) Trust me, it's not used by that many drug dealers because i've been buying drugs for a long time and i only got it in 2017 <laughs> um awesome so i have one here from a different news source wow news btc.com this says crypto exchanges begin to shut down the bear market is in full force so you may have seen this lately over the weekend uh it came out basically this article is saying after miners it's cryptocurrency exchanges that stand before the wrath of the bearish market so um liqui exchange a small but long-running crypto trading company announced that it would close down operations in pretty much a goodbye note that they tweeted out did you read Uh, that Yes, I did. It was, it was like a straight up goodbye note. Yeah, it was. It was basically a exchange suicide note. If, yeah. they, if that is a thing that could possibly exist, that's what this was. So they are a Ukrainian exchange and said that they were basically unable to provide liquidity to their customers, proper liquidity. So they had no economic reason to continue its services, which is just a shame because I would imagine the name Liqui came from from a shortened version of liquidity, yeah. which they had none of. So uh, they the quote here is from their goodbye note. So we also do not see any point or any economic point in providing you with our services, the note read. <laughs> However, we do not want to return to where we were a month ago. Hence, we decided to close all accounts and stop providing our services. It broke our hearts to do that. So... Yeah. Um, Basically, they said here after the I mean, they basically said the bear market was their reason for having a close up shop. Mm -hmm. They noted the market had changed significantly since 2017. Yeah, no shit. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) I can't believe we went through a full year of bear market already. That's that blows my mind still. And it ain't over. (laughs) We are currently under thirty four hundred dollars. I believe the last time at the time of this recording. Yep. Thirty three seventy five. I'm too lazy to capitulate. Yeah, um, (laughs) it's true. So um, 
basically, you know, there's a ton of other exchanges out here that are, mm-hmm. are going down or struggling. Well, you got the, um, and hacking and all that other fun stuff right, too on so, top of uh, that. So Cryptobia was hacked again today. <laughs> Well, and they I, haven't even been online. I don't have all the facts here, but I believe I think it was not. <clears throat> what, what do you know? <laughs> I'm going to speculate on some things right now. <laughs> so I'll take a seat. Uh, no, I saw a tweet, and I think it was either it was either SoCal or not so fast. I get the two accounts mixed up sometimes. It's the dyslexia. Um, but they were saying it wasn't a hack. Maybe it, it was had, not. We could call them not SoCal. Not SoCal. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> that's who it was. Not so, Cal. Um, but they were saying it was the um, the e- the Ethereum address that was hacked, and and then the private keys were erased or something like that, right? I think that yeah, was I, I think that was the so. issue. I think apparently that had happened on the first time. They just released the news today, mm, so it happened during the first hack. But I think the, the news only came out today, so it felt. I don't like know two if you hacks. saw this either. Um, the your your uh, one of your favorite exchanges, KuCoin. Oh no, uh, not KuCoin. Check our rec podcast email. They sent us an email today because one of the bags that we have is being delisted. Oh, okay, uh, I forget what it is, but they also sent out a list of you know I I think it was like ten other coins that are being delisted. Yeah, I think the uh, one I think I know which one it is. Is it like uh, uh, which they are calling Arc block. Yeah, and yeah, they are calling uh, they're calling them disqualified. So yeah, no, they, that happens all the time on KuCoin. They'll have uh, like they'll delist a bunch of coins uh, just because they're not the liquidity is not there. Or it's going to be interesting to see, man. It's like okay, well, you got all these smaller exchanges that either are going to have to shut down or can't provide liquidity or anything like that, and then you know because they either launched in this bull market or there was just too many exchanges and then you got something like Beeksy which is brand new and they're going to provide something that's never been done before by a crypto exchange and Mm -hmm. they've built in a bear market so uh, you know by the time there's a bull market you could see them as one of the top exchanges and um, you know it also is interesting that I think you might see um, some of these large exchanges acquiring some of these smaller exchanges. Yeah that'd be interesting to see yeah, and I, I think it's going to happen eventually. It would so, make sense, right? It happens with yeah. everything else. Sure does. <laughs> so we'll see it, um, I think. But hope somebody buys see. us out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we are for sale. Yeah, um, oh, I'm, yeah I always also, have a price. If you're, yeah. We, it's we'll, pretty low. <laughs> get at us. <laughs> I, I'm about done with this piece of shit. <laughs> um, I got one more news story here. Uh, from our friends at CCN.com. Uh, maybe they could buy us out. We we'll use all yeah. their news stories. Uh, ready for liftoff. Fidelity's Bitcoin custody service is just weeks away from launch. So this came out today. This was the big hot story today and clearly caused the market to pump. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> 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 so um, Fidelity Investments is targeting a March launch date for its Bitcoin custody service. Uh, according to three people with knowledge of the matter, um, the mutual fund giant is moving forward with the plan that could or to enter the cryptocurrency market. Um, and says they are currently serving a select set of eligible clients as they continue to build their initial solution. But over the next couple months, they will thoroughly engage with and prioritize prospective clients based on needs, jurisdiction, and other factors. Um, so, you know, we actually talked about this story when we they first announced it was going to happen way back in October. Um, you know, and Fidelity is a huge, huge, huge um, asset management firm based out of Boston, $7.2 trillion worth of assets under management for over 27 million clients. So uh, this is a big deal. deal. Yeah, this is a big deal. So, um, you know, it's the start of what we've been talking about for a long time with this institutional money uh, (laughs) coming into the market. And they're, you know, this bear market's not stopping these huge firms from coming close. Yeah. Come close to an end to the bear market, right? Look, uh, I I mean, this is positive shit, right? It's like, 
I've never been more bullish on crypto or Bitcoin specifically yeah. than I am now as far as the fundamentals of it all and all the news and everything like that. And the price is just a short term thing, in my opinion. And I, agree. I know it sucks and a lot of people are wrecked and, um, you know, it happens. But I, I've never been more bullish on the overall longevity, I think, of where this is going to go. And um, as far as the price goes, like as shitty as it is, I mean, we can buy Bitcoin for $3,300 right now. You know what I mean? Like it's. Are like, you? I am. I haven't. I'm no. still waiting. Uh, like I mean, I buy, like I, I do, you know, I every, I just do weekly buys, basically. I'm going to be that asshole that misses out <laughs> because well, I waited too long <laughs> to yeah. jump back in. Um, well, once you buy the top, you got to learn just to keep, you know, just rationing in your money. <laughs> Slowly but surely, you'll eventually find the bottom. If you buy every week, unless it goes to zero, you will eventually buy the bottom. <laughs> I see. I, I'm not too worried about buying the exact bottom. I just don't think we're uh, there uh, yet. You know once I mean? it's done, it's going to be chamber bottom buyer. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're going to change your uh, Twitter handle to. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> Power bottom. <laughs> power bottom buyer yeah. chamber yeah. <laughs> crypto chamber power bottom buyer which uh is the hashtag for today's Perfect. episode hashtag power bottom buyer I love it. <laughs> and that is going to do it for us with the news uh chamber i'm gonna go first with this because we got some time here okay um i'm gonna go first you wanted to share uh a real life wrecked story that you've yeah. never told on the show before so the floor yeah, is yours for Chambers. So, Welcome to Chambers Real Life Wrecked. So we were chatting before the show. We like to come up with you know different ideas, and so we don't stay stale and you know create stuff that people want to listen to. So we're like, well, we haven't Which really we've talked- probably done a terrible job. Uh, yeah, no, I mean we're it's it's a learning it's you know it's it's a work in progress. Um, but I said we really haven't talked too much about about our own real life wreck stories. And I mean I wreck myself all the time, whether it's crypto or in the real life. Um, so I'm like, okay, let's let's tell some of ours. So the one I'm going to tell you today is called Hook to the Face. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we had just purchased, this was maybe eight years ago. I want to say eight years ago. Um, we had just purchased our first house. Um, and uh, we just, I think I just got married. Yeah, I just got married. And we, my wife and I... Uh, you know, we were, you know, working out together and getting in, in shape and, you Let's know, that kind of out. stuff. Yeah, yeah. We, we like to work out together. Uh, she likes to work out more than I do. Uh, if, <laughs> if you knew us, you would understand. Um, but we were, you know, we were working out and she, she likes to use um, like resistance bands and stuff, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> I see like not resistance going. bands, but like the pull ones. You know uh-huh. what I mean? Yeah. And uh, so we had a setup in our old condo. Uh, that worked really well, and we would do that. So we had moved into this new house, and we hadn't, we didn't have like an exercise room yet. So I was kind of setting one up, but she wanted to get an exercise in uh, before we had set up the new room. So I had this hook uh, <laughs> on the wall, or uh, like in this, you know, in our in our basement, uh, in a room where you know where where we'd want to you know do our workouts. And I said, well, let me test it out for you, make sure it's it's sturdy enough. So you know. I hook I hook the you know the the rubber band around this hook and I sit down with the the handles in my hand and I don't know if you know how these things work but the further you're back the more resistance you have right right so I'm sitting down on the ground and I'm pulling back I'm like okay it's pretty good I like how you've just talked to me like I've never worked out a day in my life well <laughs> I don't know how or I just don't know how elasticity works you know are you familiar with the <laughs> mechanism hey, of hey have you ever seen a rubber band yeah so <laughs> <It's> like that. <laughs> <laughs> you asshole. Yeah, well, I just want to make sure uh, you guys have rubber bands down there in the U.S. Um, oh, so I scooch back. I, I do a little bit more. And I'm like, okay, this is pretty good. I said, let me just give it one more. And I scooch back, and I'm like, oh, this is a good, you know, getting a good pump here, right? <laughs> and as soon as I thought those words, everything went black. Oh, no. <laughs> and what happened... <laughs> was the hook came directly out of the wall and slingshotted me uh, in the face. Oh, my God. A metal hook. I mean, 
thank goodness it did not hit my eye. Like I would have been de- like, I'm surprised I'm still alive to tell the story because <laughs> it was like, could I'm a, I'm a big dude. And when I'm pulling hard, if I can rip a hook out of the wall, it's coming at you pretty quickly. So if this thing had hit me in the throat or the eye or it ended up hitting me on the nose and the chin and oh. I filleted my face. Uh, my, my two lips down the middle were split in half. My, ch- uh, the, the top of my lip to the bottom of my chin was split in half where you could see like the bone of my chin. Ugh. It was insane. So, um, we had a, um, a housewarming party, uh, that late, I want to say a week from then. So maybe this was like a Sunday night and like that Friday, Saturday, we were having a party and my wife, as we're driving to the hospital, she's like, I guess we'll have to call the party off. And I'm like, we're not calling the party off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'll be better. I've always prided myself on my ability to uh, regenerate, uh, a la Deadpool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I ended up having uh, 24 stitches in my face. And that Friday, I had pulled Oh my them God, 24 stitches? Yeah, 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 I was messed up. I was messed up. My dad called me vagina chin for... <laughs> the better part of a year. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, my chin looked like a vagina. Um, but yeah, so a week later, the, the Friday of the party, I slowly start pulling out the stitches and everything was fine. And we partied and I was, you know, my wife thought I was a superhero after that. She thought I was Bruce Willis from the movie Unbreakable. Oh, my God. That's crazy. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, hence the beard, wrecked. too. That's why I wear a beard. Uh, it's to cover up all this. The scar? I got, I got a pretty pretty significant scar. And the, uh, the damage I did to my lips actually causes me to drool now all the time. It's kind of numb. Oh so, God. sometimes I spit when I talk, and it's, it's very upsetting, and my wife laughs at me all the time. And sometimes just drool will drift, drift down my lip like a fucking asshole. <laughs> And he never worked out again. Again. Never again. <laughs> never again. You're 100% correct, sir. That's never fantastic. Again. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> All right. Well, that was story time with Chamber and Chamber's real life wrecked story. So um, thank you for sharing that. Not with a us, problem. Chamber. There's more to come. I, I'll write them down. There's, there's, there's definitely more of those stories. And I'm sure my wife will be able to help me out with some material. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure we could have your wife on, and she would just. Give she would tell you all sorts of real life stories. stories. About me. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, all right, we are going to do something fun here again at your expense because that's what we like to do here. At my expense. So, at your expense. Yes. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> this, is, this will definitely be at your expense. I think, unless you're going to impress me here, in which case I will be very, uh, very shocked. So. All right. Uh, today is Tuesday, um, the, what is it, 28th 29th. of January? 29th. 29th of January. So uh, this weekend is the Super Bowl. and I've heard of this. If, <laughs> right. Uh, many, <laughs> many, many people have, uh, especially if you are an American, which you are not. But, no. Um, it's pretty big okay. here, though. That's okay. So the Super Bowl is coming up on Sunday, uh, and we have uh, the Patriots and the Los Angeles Rams in the Super Bowl. Um, And, you know, you've said a couple times on this show that you you know nothing about American football, pretty much. No. Okay. I mean, or Canadian football, uh, football in general. You've also said a couple times on this show that you are – you had at one time – or another before crypto been very interested in American politics. I have, yes. So we are going to play a game uh, <laughs> inspired by our friends at the Coin Boys. We are going to play U.S. Senator or Super Bowl contender. Oh, my goodness. You were, and for the record, uh, Bunchu was working on this prior to the show. I told him not to tell me. Like He had an idea, and I said, well, don't tell me what it is, and just surprised me on, on like while we're recording. And this, I was I was not expecting this. This is good. <laughs> this is all so right. here's what we're going to do. I am going to read you a name, and you are going to tell me if this person is a U.S. senator or if they will be playing in the Super Bowl. No governors, only senators. 
only senators. <laughs> oh, damn. I know all the governors. <laughs> no, I had a feeling you might. So I went obscure. <laughs> Ooh, I right. tried to go as obscure as possible. So you're going to tell me if this person is <laughs> a U.S. senator or if they will be competing for Super Bowl 53 title this weekend. Oh, so, and these are players that are playing this weekend? In the Super Bowl. Okay. Yes. All right. Perfect. Correct. So, And, and right. the senators are currently sitting senators? I believe so. Okay. Uh, as, as long as, as far as you know, uh, as long as Google has ta- told enough. me the correct thing. All right. Okay. So we are going to start with one here. Uh, Lamar Alexander. <sighs> See, you're trying to get me in a profile situation here, because you say Lamar, I'm going to think football player, but maybe that's the trick. So I'm going to go senator. Ooh, correct. That is correct. Lamar Alexander is a 78-year-old uh, Caucasian fella. No. Out of, <laughs> yes, out of the great state That's of That's double Tennessee. racist on me, by the way. <laughs> yes, it is. I had a feeling he would go there. And uh, he is he is from Tennessee. Um, <clears throat> okay. Here we go. <laughs> we are going with... Uh, Sheldon Whitehouse. That sounds like a, what are they called, defensive ends? That sounds like a big dude. Sure does. I'm going with football. <laughs> that but- is incorrect. No. <laughs> Sheldon Whitehouse is the senator from Rhode Island. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, here we go. Philip Dorsett. Hmm. Again, I'm just profiling the names. That's all I'm doing. Um, so you have no idea who these people are? None. No, I've, no, I have not known one of those names. So the best part about this is any NFL fan out there. That's funny. Like these are the popular players. These, like you're not. Yes, these okay, are. Goodness. These are going to be players that every football fan that's paying attention to the Super Bowl will know. Would know. Okay. Yes. So like a a, a pretty decent percentage of the population will know this yes All right. um and so they were laughing at you for sheldon whitehouse <laughs> <laughs> well, they're gonna be laughing at me for this one see because i'm thinking this guy here sounds like a kicker like it, it's either a governor or it's either a senator or a kicker that seems like a uh, so what's your final answer here? i'm gonna go kicker i'm going football you are correct he is a football player is he a kicker he is not okay. he is a wide receiver for the uh, new england patriots all right good Okay, we are going to go with Chris Coons. That sounds familiar. I'm going football. He is a senator out of (laughs) Delaware. (laughs) This is good stuff. I like this. Damn it. Um, How about Aaron Donald? Oh, that sounds familiar. I would have said baseball player. Um, Don't confuse this now with Aaron Rodgers, who you may know. (laughs) uh, I want to go football. Final answer? Yeah. Football player is correct. He is a defensive lineman for the Los Angeles Rams. Um, Okay, let's go with James White. That's pretty much the most generic name you can find. (laughs) Absolutely. James White is a U.S. senator. He is not. He is. <laughs> he is one of the featured running backs for no the New England Patriots. <sighs> this is embarrassing. This oh, is very have, embarrassing. Hold on. You have, let's see. I feel like one or two. One, two. Correct. You have two of the three football players I've asked you, you've actually gotten correct, okay. which is right. nice. So you've gotten Philip Dorsett and Aaron Donald. Okay, we are going here with Marcus Peters. You mean, is it LaMarcus or nope, Marcus? just Marcus Peters. Fudge. Um, we're going football player. Correct. Nice. Wow. That's an impressive one. I didn't know if you would get that. I mean, it was Uh, a 50-50 guess. (laughs) (laughs) Julian Edelman. That is a good question. Um, Edelman. 
Is that a, maybe I know it because it's a U.S. senator. Uh, yeah, I'll go with senator. Incorrect. No. <laughs> Julian Edelman is a star wide receiver. Star wide receiver? Yes, Never. very popular. I thought he, I was. I would have said eighty percent on senator. I'm like that. That's very a name I've heard. Popular. Uh, uh, on the New England Patriots has won multiple Super Bowls. Um, let's go with Jared Goff. Jared Goff is a football player. That is correct. Yeah. He is the quarterback. Okay. I, I would have gotten, yeah. you would have gotten, you would have gotten slaughtered. For LA, if, for LA, right? That. Yes, correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay. I know this. I know that. Um, guy. I'm a big Laker fan, so I think I, he's been to a Laker game. Probably. Yeah. Okay. That's Let's the only go. way I know him. <laughs> Let's go with Tim Scott. Tim Scott is the most senator name I've ever heard in my life. That is correct. He <laughs> is a senator. Um, let's go with Todd Gurley. Gurley? Yep. Like a girl? Uh, G-U-R-L-E-Y. Okay. To me, that that's, that's a name that you need to be tough with. Not a senator. That's not a senator's name. You're not winning <laughs> elections with Gurley. You got to be a big tough guy, and to me, that says football player. Okay, uh, that? <laughs> that is correct. Nice. He is the running back for the Los Angeles Rams. Nice. Okay, let's go with Richard Shelby. Hmm. I feel like we haven't had it. Hmm. I want to say senator. That is a senator. Correct. Nice. Just did some uh, multiple. Ch- Multiple choice uh, answer on that one. <laughs> Robert Woods. Hmm. Robert. I'm going Senator again. Incorrect. Damn it. Wide receiver. I'm trying for, to play the odds. Wide receiver for the uh, Los Angeles Rams. We are going to go with Andrew Whitworth. Andrew Whitworth. And uh, that that sounds like another big, like a white, you know, what's the big fat white guys? What are the big fat white guys called? <laughs> you know what I'm talking There's about. There's a lot they of have uh, a name. They have a name. Offensive linemen. That are, the, yes. w- he's one of them. He is, correct. That is he is one of correct. them, though? Is he, he is. an offensive yes, lineman? he's an offensive tackle. <laughs> he is, indeed. Nice. All right. Let's go with... Um, so for the record, he is a big fat white guy. Yes, he is. I'm amazing. <laughs> I'm so happy about this. Let's go with Corey Littleton. Corey Littleton. That's a name I would go to Senate with. I'm going Senate. Incorrect. Senator. Really? Corey Littleton is a linebacker on the Los Angeles Rams. All right, a couple more a here. Voice, a vote for Littleton is a vote for change. <laughs> no? I hear it already. <laughs> a couple more here. Uh, <laughs> Roy Blunt. Hmm. Senator. Correct. Wow. Senator out of Missouri. Mizzou. So, all right, now we're going to go with uh, let's go with hmm one more here John Thune John Thune total guess I'm going senator again correct nice and last last one All right. Chris Hogan you didn't even give me one easy one who's the quarter I, I I can't even. Tom Brady is that one of the guys? Yeah. Yeah, I'm Could, not going to give you Tom Brady. I know that one. Nuts. <laughs> uh, sorry, what was the last one? Chris Hogan. Chris Hogan, football player. Wow, correct. I nice. did not think you were going to get that one. All right, you didn't do terrible. You got. I mean, let's see. Out mostly of mostly guesses. Out of senators, you got one, two, three, four, five out of. Seven senators, right. but that was mostly guessing. Uh, and yeah, yeah, no, of football mostly. players, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven out of eleven. 
Seven out of 11 football players you got right in the Super Bowl and five out of seven senators. So there you have it. uh, There you have it. Chamber is clearly more of a Senate guy (laughs) than he is a football guy. I've always (laughs) felt that in my heart. Next time we play, though, I'm going to give you uh, provincial premiers versus Laker greats. Uh, well, I mean, Maybe not I think greats. I would. Great no, I would. I'd probably be good on the Lakers. Yeah. I'd be okay. Like you'd have to give me, but I would be guessing all of the other. Uh, I don't even know what a provincial premier is. It's like a governor. Is that like the soccer league? Premier? Yeah, like Premier League. <laughs> premier. It's just a bunch of. <laughs> just a bunch of Canadian government workers <laughs> kicking them ball. Playing, playing soccer. <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for us. We are straight out of nonsense today. Um, that's going to do it. Congratulations at Foolish Dweller and at Yasin Dira for winning the Hero and Beeksy uh, giveaways. Uh, thank you to our sponsors for those Hero Games and Beeksy Exchange. Um, and that's about it. Any other last words, Chamber, here? Uh, no, I um, want, want to thank uh, people that went on Patreon, helped us out there. Uh, if that's something you'd like to do, I'd strongly suggest visiting our Patreon page. Uh, we have four different tiers that you can pick from. Uh, there's a $2 per month tier, which gives you access to the patron-only feed, and we'll add you to our Twitter thank you list. Um, the $5 one gets fun. You get, uh, you get some of those good stuff. Uh, you get into our wrecked VIP telegram. Um, a couple other things here. You get uh, <laughs> Bunchu's monthly bet, which uh, <laughs> Bunchu will give you a surefire win every single month. Uh, Cynthia's monthly mixology recipe, where Cynthia will give you uh, her drink of the month. And Chamber's monthly Netflix show, where I tell you what to watch for the month. Uh, that one's terrible. Don't, I wouldn't pay for that. Uh, that's, uh, you pay double for that. That's a steal at twice the price. Uh, <laughs> you can jump funny. up to the $25. Uh, that gives you a chance to win a spot on our Meet the Fans episode and contribute with uh, interview questions over and above all the other stuff. And then if you want to get crazy, $100, uh, you can get your own episode. Uh, so Raptor G- you, you can you just can, own me. Yeah. Uh, Raptor Jesus, <laughs> I know you want that one. That one's all for you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> that's it that's gonna do it for us uh join us again later in the week we've got some awesome guests coming up in the next couple episodes as well that we will um we are very excited to interview but until next time don't get wrecked and that is financial advice